Good morning, Church. Uh, it's a privilege to be here. Uh, welcome to this uh, Sunday morning online church service, which is being premiered uh, on Facebook and YouTube. Friends, I would encourage you to share the link with your family and relatives and friends so that everybody can uh, join with praise and worship. We have come to the uh, last month of the year. And we all know why December is famous for. The world is preparing to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Surroundings are decorated with beautiful lights, reminding us of the beauty of the true light, which came into the world some around 2000 years ago. We read Isaiah 9, 6. It says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders and he would be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah, one of the prophets, prophets prophesied uh, about coming of the Savior you know, so many centuries ago and almost after 700 years later an angel announced to the shepherds that the Messiah has been born. It's given in Luke 2.11. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Come, let's pray. Our loving and, loving and heavenly Father, we thank you for the beautiful morning time. We thank you for sending Jesus uh, as the light uh, to this earth. We pray for each one of us who is joining this service from different locations, different backgrounds, O oh Lord. And uh, we thank you for this technology which can unite us in your name, O oh Lord. We pray that you bless each one of us, O oh Lord, and let this uh, service be a blessings for, for all the members who have joined in, O oh Lord. In Jesus' most precious name, I pray. Amen. Uh, now over to Sneha and the worship team. Good morning church. I'm so glad to be here this morning. Gathered together with all of you to worship the Lord today. You know, I just want to read from uh, John chapter 3 verses 16 and 17. It says, For this is how God loved the world. He gave His one and only Son so that everyone who believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And it goes on to say, God sent His Son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through Him. And that brings so much joy to us. That is such great news that Jesus did not come to condemn us. You know, He came to save and it pleased the Father to reconcile us to Him through His very own Son. And having that joy in our hearts in this season of Christmas and celebrating the birth of Jesus, let's be reminded that, you know, the birth of Jesus was God's rescue plan for us put into action. You know, because it was put into action, today we come together and we gather and sing. Had it not been for Jesus, we would not be here to sing to Him, to sing for what He has done for us. So let's just gather together and with joy and gladness in our hearts, let's sing because Jesus, our Savior, has come down into the world and we will never be the same again. Our lives are changed forever.
repeat the sounding joy repeat repeat the sounding joy hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down as your people sing we will rise with you lifted on your wings and the world will see that our God saves our God saves there is hope 
Matthew 1, 21 to 23. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us.
Matthew chapter 4 verse 16 The people living in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of the shadow of death a light has dawned Jesus we proclaim today and we know and we believe that you your birth you were the light that dawned on the world and you are our only hope and our only light even now in these difficult times that our country and our world is facing. You are our only hope. We pray that we will believe this and proclaim it in our lives. And we thank you. We thank you for coming down. We thank you for coming with mercy. And we thank you for dying on the cross for us, for rising again, so that we too may have eternal life. Thank you, Jesus.
just want to thank you. We want to thank you, Jesus, for coming down so that we could have hope, so that the world could have hope, Lord, so that we could heal. We want to thank you, Jesus, because you, you cared so much for us, Lord, that you wanted us to be saved, Lord. And you truly are alone, the hope of this world. There is no hope, Lord, the world has apart from you. And I just want to thank you for that, Jesus, that you're not hiding, Lord, but you are the light for the world to see, Lord. You are the hope for all those who will receive. So I pray, Lord, I pray that your light will shine brightest, Lord, in the darkness of this world. Lord, your hope, Lord, will shine brightest, Lord Jesus, in the hopelessness that is so prevalent, Lord. And I pray, Father, that your Son who has, who has been sent down to save us, Lord, will be the Savior of this world. And everybody will proclaim and believe that Jesus is their Savior. And, and Lord, we will rejoice in that and we will be redeemed and restored and reconciled to our Father through you, Lord Jesus. May this be the story of this world. May this be the story of this dying world, Lord, this hopeless world, Father, that we will see your Son lifted high and we will hope in Him and we will be saved in, in Jesus' name. I pray, Amen. Bible tells about uh, two blind men. They were sitting maybe by the roadside. They were able to hear but they were not able to see. They heard that Jesus was passing through. So they cried out to him with all their voice. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Their need was genuine. Everybody around them could see. That is what at least they understood. And they were convinced that this Jesus is going to do something for them. Did the people around understand? No, they did not understand. The crowd told them to be quiet. They rebuked him. What did Jesus do? Jesus was not moved by the crowd. He was moved by these blind men who had a need, who cried out to him. Jesus moved with compassion. He came, he touched them, healed them immediately. And they followed him. Even today, Jesus is the same. That is what the Bible says. Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. He is not changing. He is full of compassion. There may be so many things in your life that everyone around you have. Maybe you don't have a father to advise you. Every other friend of yours has a father to advise. Maybe you don't have loving parents. Maybe you don't have a spouse who stands by you, but everybody else has. If you would call out to Jesus with your genuine need, He will still stop where He is going and He will answer your prayer. He will stop because He is the same compassionate God and He will see that your problem is solved. Friends, what is your need? What is that you do not have which is genuinely your need? Cry out to the Lord. He will listen because He is a compassionate God. He will definitely listen and answer your prayer. That is what I believe God is talking to you today. Thank you. Thank you, Meena, Sneha and the worship team. Please join me in praying for the country. 
our loving and heavenly father we pray for this country o lord we are privileged to be born on this land we pray for the prime minister the president the chief minister the cabinet ministers uh people in the government offices o lord we pray that let your wisdom prevail upon them so the policies that what they make is uh, pro poor and and you know when it takes care of the downtrodden o lord uh we also pray at this moment uh, for uh, you know the stand up which is there between the government and the farmers to be amicably resolved we pray for the security forces who are protecting our borders we pray for, uh, you know people who are involved in uh, covid work o lord including doctors nurses paramedical staff hospitals o lord and we pray for your protection upon them o lord we also pray for the covid vaccine that that more and more people are able to you know get those vaccines o lord we pray for everything o lord we pray for each one of us uh, who has joined uh, the service from different locations and also the people who are working in the background to make the service possible o lord in jesus most precious name i pray amen friends uh uh you know i would also like to inform you that you know that there is a chain prayer that happens between monday through friday o lord uh this has been happening since last 9 months please feel encouraged to register for the same also every tuesday there is a corporate prayer that happens at 7:30 this is on the zoom platform uh please let us know if you wish to be a part of either the corporate prayer or the chain prayer or both I would also like to inform you that there is a chain prayer that happens uh, from Monday through Friday. Uh, this is on various issues and topics. Uh, this has been happening since last nine months. Uh, please and feel encouraged to register for the same. There is also a time of corporate prayer, uh, which happens on Tuesdays at 7:30 p.m. This happens on the Zoom platform. Please let us know if you wish to be a part of uh, either the chain prayer or the corporate prayer or both. This is the time to welcome newcomers uh, those who have joined in for the first time we extend a warm welcome to you all uh, please feel free to uh, contact us on the numbers given on the screen uh, one of the pastors uh, would get in touch with you and we would love to know more about you uh, this is to inform the newcomers that the regular sunday service starts at 10 am it is premiered on facebook and youtube at 11:45 uh, we have a time of fellowship on zoom platform we call it a virtual lobby uh, we would love to see you all there it's a time uh, of face to face interaction as you would know that we have our very own uh, drama community 
you will see a short video on what they plan to do this Christmas. Trust me, it's extremely interesting. Many of uh, you would know that I work for a housing finance company. Uh, there I learned the strength of the building depends a lot on the foundation it has. Uh, the higher one wishes to go, the foundation needs to go deeper. This is uh, true for us too and our spiritual lives. Uh, we have a lovely opportunity to attend the foundation course. It's likely to start sometime in the month of uh, January. Please do book a slot for yourself. Uh, I can tell you from my personal experience, uh, it uh, has been an extremely enriching experience for me and, and our family. Uh, we will see a short video uh, on the same. For my toughness. Redirecting. Very useful for crystal life. Very good. Fantastic change of heart. Walking towards the faith. Habitual change. Spot of time. Enlightening. <laughs> Amazing experience. Prop is ready. Awesome. Wow. Foundation must do. Just do it. Just do it. Come join Foundation Girls. This is the time for collecting tithes and offerings. I would like to read a verse from Bible. It's in Luke 6 38. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap for with the measure you use it will be measured to you our tithes and offering has also moved online whatever has put god has put in your heart please pass it on to the online uh, bbc account and if you have not received the details of the bombay baptist church yet reach out to us on the numbers uh, flashing on the screen if you are not able to do online transaction for some reason Please feel free to deposit the check uh, at the church uh, between Monday and Friday. Come, let's pray for tithes and offerings. Our loving, our loving and heavenly Father, uh, you are the owner of everything, even things that we possess. We pray for each one of us uh, who have given generously, uh, you know, for building your kingdom, O oh Lord, and for your people. In Jesus' most uh, precious name I pray. Amen. Moving on to the word, uh, it's a joy to introduce uh, Ruby Caleb. And the topic for today is the third part of the sermon series, uh, Jesus and 2020 AD. It's about God's mercies uh, in trauma and losses. Over to Ruby. Good morning, church. It is indeed a joy to be looking at God's word together this morning. We've been in the series, Jesus and 2020. And last week, we looked at how do we become people who not only just survive, but actually thrive in the midst of a crisis. And this morning, we're going to be looking at something similar to that, especially in this season of the pandemic. How do we become people who can move from a place of grief and pain to that of experiencing the comfort that comes from the Lord so that in turn we become people who can comfort those around us. Uh, I was reminded of a movie that came out in 2015. It's an animation movie by the name of Inside Out. 
It tells the story of 11-year-old girl Riley. Now Riley's father gets a job in a different city which means that the whole family now has to be relocated. So in the process Riley has to leave behind her friends, her relatives and everything that was close to her heart. Now while Riley is not happy with the decision, she goes along because that is ultimately what the family needs at the moment. Now the movie is based on um, five characters and these are all the main emotions that are there in Riley's head. So we get to meet joy, anger, fear, sadness and disgust. And throughout the movie we see this headquarters where the interactions between these emotions are played out. Now joy is the most bubbly and cheerful among them. and she is in fact in charge of the headquarters it is her job to ensure that riley has only happy emotions in her life she makes sure that all the memories and all the experiences that riley can think of will all be touched only by moments of joy she is confused what role does sadness have to play often she makes sure that sadness doesn't come close to any of riley's memories or experiences because she doesn't want riley to look back and feel pain or sorrow now the movie goes along where accidentally um uh, joy and sadness get thrown out of the headquarters leaving fear anger and disgust in charge and throughout the movie what we see is joy ensuring that sadness is kept far away from the memories of riley until by the end she begins to realize that the only way riley can actually experience a healthy season where um uh, she gets to deal with the sorrow and the loss that she experiences is by allowing the feelings of sadness to be dealt with and while i was reminded of that movie i had to say that you know we are, we are all like joy aren't we we somehow believe that the only emotions we are allowed to feel is that of happiness and so when pain sorrow or any brokenness comes anywhere close to us we make every effort to either block it or to remove it from our lives but the sad reality is ever since sin entered our world through the rebellion of adam and eve in the very beginning what has happened is suffering sickness death and sorrow have sadly become a reality of each of our lives and even as christians none of us are immune from the pain and the sorrow of the brokenness of this world and we can all individually look back at our own lives and we can remember those instances of pain and sorrow whether it's come from a, a childhood coming from dysfunctional families or trauma or abuse uh, uh, several experiences that have all brought us to a place where we've had to deal with the the most uncomfortable feelings of pain and right now we are in the midst of this pandemic and we can all say that there's not a single one of us who's not been impacted by the sorrow and and the pain because of the pandemic we know amongst ourselves we have families who've lost their loved ones we know people who've lost their jobs finances have uh, been impacted health wise uh, uh, many of us have been impacted by the virus relationships have taken a toll dreams uh, and ambitions with which we looked forward to 2020 have all come crumbling down this was a year when most of us were thinking we would send our little ones to school but unfortunately they are all stuck with us at home i know of friends who were planning for their marriages so eagerly and eventually had to go and marry without having uh, their loved ones nearby In fact, one of my relatives just lost her mother 2 weeks before her wedding. Pain and sorrow is a reality that we cannot deny. It has become a part of us in this broken and sinful world. So as we navigate through this pandemic, what are we supposed to do with this pain? How do we deal with it? What does the Bible have to say? Uh, in 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 how we are supposed to bring our grief to god 
And so what I want to do as we uh, look through uh, the scripture for today, which is from Psalm 13, I want to point us through three aspects. The first one is dealing with pain through the gift of lament. The second one I want to look at is what is that pathway of lament look like? And finally, how does the outworking of lament play for us as a community? So coming to Psalm 13. Now scholars say Psalm 13, the context of it is probably when David was running away um, from his son Absalom who was plotting to kill him. Now Absalom had become power hungry and he was looking for any opportunity where he could um, overcome his father and take over the throne. And so this is how the psalm begins. It says, How long, O Lord, will you forget forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and every day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? And what we are reading in the psalm is the sorrow, the anguish, and the pain that David is experiencing. It's very clear that this has been going for a period of time because these are the words David uses, how long. He's been praying and seeking and asking God to intervene, but it seems like God has not answered that yet. And what we can say is David teaches us a very important lesson here about how we are to deal with our pain. David tells us that the way for us to deal with our pain is not to run away from it. It is not to numb it. It is not to avoid it. But the way we have to deal with our grief is to meet it head on by bringing it to the Lord. You know, in our culture, if we look up, what we are taught is that we must do everything within our power uh, to not have to deal with pain. And I was just thinking, what are some of the few ways in which our culture tells us to deal with pain? And probably the first one I would say is to distract it, to numb the pain so that we don't feel the severity of it. And there are just a million ways that all of us try to do that. One would be uh, just overworking, keeping ourselves busy. We take commitment after commitment. We work for long hours. And the, the whole idea behind it is we, we keep our minds engaged with work so that we won't have to sit in silence and deal with the loud voices of pain that comes in our heart. Or sometimes another way that we try to deal um, with pain is we medicate ourselves. We do that with physical pain and we do sometimes the same when it comes to emotional pain. Or another way, uh, we just look for comfort food. And now we just have so many options. Even in this pandemic, while we are not able to go out, we've got all these uh, different ways of how Swiggy and the, and the rest of the companies can bring the food that we want to our doorstep. Are you feeling sad? Are you feeling afraid? Are you feeling in anguish? Why don't you comfort yourself with some good food? Or maybe the other way is we just binge watch movie after movie. We scroll through our social media for hours without any purpose because we don't like silence. Anytime we sit in silence or solitude, we hear the loud voices of our emotions speaking to us. And the only way we can avoid that is by distracting our minds. Another way we try to deal with our pain is first we distract ourselves or the second is just to deny it, to just dismiss it. We tell ourselves this pain is not that bad after all. I'm strong, I can deal with it. And I guess in, in, in our culture, uh, it becomes significant because we're often told that showing pain and expressing our grief is a sign of weakness. And I think this becomes even more difficult for those of us who are men. We are told from a young age that boys don't cry. Uh, there was a survey that was done by Tata Institute and they found out um, when they were doing a study on grief that after death, uh, women naturally uh, tend to grieve 
whereas the men kept themselves busy by taking care of the the practical needs that were related to the funeral and all the other um, needs involved so somewhere uh, we have trained ourselves that men don't grieve men are strong we don't feel pain and so we deny the reality of what pain is doing in our hearts and and the sad part about this is when we deny our pain we go into the lives of people who are experiencing pain themselves and we do the same thing to them we ask them to toughen up we tell them to get over their pain and so in that way we do not give people uh, who are grieving in their sorrow the opportunity to heal and finally um, the other extreme is if we are not denying our pain is that after the initial difficulties of feeling our pain and sorrow we actually begin to enjoy living in our pain and sorrow we become people who now uh, find this pain our sorrow our suffering to be our identity and we also like the attention it gives us every time we talk about our suffering and we we talk about our pain we like how people come towards us and we use that as opportunities uh, uh, to just feel good about ourselves we value in self pity and the whole thing is as we live there we don't want to move out of it and come to a place of experiencing the healing of god and I want to read for us a quote from um you know, Peter Scherzero this is what he says that in our culture addiction has become the most common way to deal with pain we watch television for hours to not feel we keep busy we run from one activity to another we work 70 hours a week we indulge in pornography we overeat we drink we take pills anything to just help us avoid the pain some of us demand that someone or something yeah um, it could be a marriage a family children should just take our pain away but when we deny our pain the losses and the feelings year after year we become less and less human we transform slowly into empty shells with smiley faces painted on them in neglecting our intense emotions we become false to ourselves and we lose a wonderful opportunity to know god we forget that change comes through brutal honesty and vulnerability before god ignoring our emotions is turning our back on reality listening to our emotions ushers us into reality and reality is where we meet god so this is the biblical alternative for what culture tells us is that we don't run away from the reality of what we are experiencing but we move towards that to god with our pain and with our sorrow and just as david began pouring out his heart before god we take our sorrows to the lord and that is what lament is lament is the language by which we express the cries of our heart before god the frustrations the pain the anger the fear the hopelessness that we experience we bring that before god as we wrestle on one side with the reality of what we are experiencing and on the other side we uh, wrestle with the fact that the god whom we serve is a sovereign god is a good god how do we bring these two to, how do we reconcile these two together and it is lament that gives us a language to bring these two together and uh, this is the way how mark rogo in his book dark clouds and deep mercy he he gives a definition for lament he says lament is the prayer of pain that leads to trust let me just say that again lament is a prayer of pain that leads to trust So lament is not just crying out to the Lord and just expressing your sorrow. There is a larger purpose to it. Christian lament is different in that it has a unique goal. It has a unique destination. And the destination is that it ends in trust of God. While we struggle with understanding what we are experiencing, 
and the pain and sorrow is so hard lament helps us to come to a place where we pour out our heart and in the process it brings us to a place where we can renew our confidence in the goodness of god now in the psalms we have 150 psalms did you know that out of them one third of the psalms that is around 60 psalms are psalms of laments and there is even an entire book in the bible called lamentations this is where uh, the people of israel as the enemy nation has come and and plundered them and wiped them out the prophet cries out to the lord in lament pouring out his heart and sorrow asking oh lord why have you allowed this so basically in lament what happens is there are these two questions that uh, the person is struggling with where are you god and in the midst of my pain and suffering why are you silent why are you allowing this and we often as we look through the laments what we see is there are individual laments people bringing their pain before god as they struggle through unique situations but there are also communal laments where a whole community is coming and pouring out their heart before god and is it possible that we are in a season that today as a community god is inviting us to lament and pour out our hearts before him as we struggle through this pain in the pandemic so what we see is that lament is god's gift to us and it is the way in which he wants us to deal with the pain and sorrow that we are experiencing not to distract ourselves not to numb ourselves so that we don't feel these emotions but the lord invites us he gives us this language where we can bring our frustrations our our hopelessness and those those feelings of sorrow and bring it and place it before his feet and so that was the first aspect we looked at that for us the biblical alternative is to deal with our pain through the gift of lament now the second aspect i want to talk about is what does a, the pathway of lament look like so in his book again uh, dark clouds and deep mercy mark uh, points these four steps and while they are not linear one leading to the other we see that almost all the lament psalms have these four aspects involved in them The first one is turning uh, to God. The second one is bringing our complaints honestly to God. The third one is asking boldly for help and finally the fourth one is trusting in God. And we see in Psalm 13 all these four aspects being played out. As I mentioned, uh, the first two that is turning to God and bringing our complaints seem to be put together in Psalm 13. So what we are seeing is David he he brings his complaints very honestly before the Lord. He tells him, "God, are you going to continue forgetting me forever? And uh, are you going to remain silent before me?" And I don't know how many of us feel that we can honestly bring our complaints to the Lord. Let me just read some more of the Psalms for you. Psalm 22 it says, "My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me?" Psalm 44 it says, "God, why do you continue sleeping? Will you not arise?" Why do you continue to reject me and will you keep hiding your face from me? Psalm 35 says, "O oh God, do not be silent. Why are you being so far from me? Won't you rise to my defense? Won't you contend for me?" In Psalm 77, again a psalm of lament, and here the psalmist is asking the Lord, "Are you going to reject us forever? Will you not show us your favor again, O oh God?" has your unfailing love that you promised has it vanished now has your promise failed for all time god have you forgotten to be merciful to us and in your anger are you withholding your compassion from us so do you see the the honesty with which the psalmist is bringing his complaints they are recognizing that god we know you are sovereign god we know you are good god we know you are a covenant keeping god but in the midst of our experience of pain we are finding it difficult to bring the two together 
and the and the beautiful reality that the psalm demonstrate to us is god gives us the permission to bring our complaints before him honestly now we don't bring our complaints from a place of pride or from a place of arrogance where we point our fingers at god asking him to justify putting him in in the stand where he has to answer to us no we bring our complaints from a place of humility telling our god lord you are sovereign but we are your children and we don't understand but this is how we feel so lament helps us to reconcile on one side that god is good everything about his character is true but today this is how we feel and we honestly bring those feelings before the lord so the the, the next thing that we see in the pathway is uh, after turning and bringing our complaints to the lord is where we boldly ask god for help and we see uh, david do this in psalm 13 in verse 3 he says look on me and answer o lord my god give light to my eyes or i will sleep in death my enemy will say i have overcome him and my foes will rejoice when i fall so what david is doing is after he pours out his heart now he comes to a place where he has not stopped trusting that god will act he continues to hold on to the promises of god and he reminds god and he tells him god now i'm looking to you that you will deliver me we looked at this aspect last week as well that when we are in a lament what god wants us to do is not to give up not to come to a place where in despair we we stop trusting and asking god to do what he has promised to do no but we bring those very promises in his word we lay it out before him and we say god this is what you have promised this is what you said you will do and so now we ask oh god help now we ask oh god deliver now we ask oh god heal and this morning i want to ask you what promise is it that the lord is putting on your heart to take to him and ask him boldly would you do that would you not in despair turn back and and not ask the lord but would you move to him in confidence and remind him that lord you are who you say you are and finally where the destination of all laments must end the fourth aspect we see is trust and this we see in verse 5 and 6 and we could say this is like the turning point of all the lament psalms that in the end the psalm moves from a place of sorrow of complaint and of anguish to one where the psalmist begins to trust him and we see that in all of the laments except for psalm 88 where it still ends in a dark note and this is what david says but i trust in your unfailing love you see that word but that is the turning point the shift that we see for david he says that god my circumstances have not changed the pain is still there but i trust in your unfailing love my heart rejoices in your salvation and i will sing to the lord for he has been good to me so we recognize that our circumstances and our prayers don't have to be answered before we come to a place of trust david tells us that we can begin to trust god even now before we see those answers to our prayers and so one aspect we need to remember is often we can think that lament is the opposite of praise but no what we see in the psalm uh, david demonstrate is that lament is the path that leads us to praise paul tells us rejoice in the lord i say and always I, again and again i say rejoice in the midst of our pain how do we rejoice it is to begin in lament that will take us to a path of rejoicing and we see david do that he says i will sing to the lord for he has been good to me the shift in david's heart causes him to look at the unfailing love of god to to remind himself of the salvation of the deliverance that god has done for him and he begins to praise him 
Now for those of us who are in that place, thousands of years later, as, as we pray these lament psalms and we come to this place where we say that, but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord for you have been good to me. You and I are in a better place where we get to see the salvation of our God. Because we know what David didn't know. That years later, God sent his one and only son, Jesus, into the world, into this broken world, into the sorrowful world, to know and experience what pain and sorrow means. Jesus did not keep himself immune from the sorrows of this world, but he entered into that. From the moment he was born, he walked through every path of sorrow you and I would experience. He has known what rejection means. He has known what loneliness means. He knows what it means to be betrayed. He knows what it means to be turned away from the very people whom you have come to save. In fact, in Isaiah chapter 53, this is how the prophet prophesied about the Savior. Who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot. And there was nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. And verse 3 says, He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows, familiar with suffering. Do you know this is our Messiah? The one whom we cry out to? He is not someone who is immune to the sufferings that we go through. In fact, he has been described as a man of sorrows, who is acquainted with our suffering. This morning, does that bring you comfort to know that your Savior and my Savior, Jesus, is acquainted with grief? As he stood in front of the tomb of Lazarus, he wept. The brokenness of what sin had caused had brought grief to his heart. Jesus demonstrates to us that in his most deepest moments of anguish, of pain, he cried out to the Father. He said, if it's possible, oh God, take this cup away from me. But not as I will, but as you will. And finally, on the cross, as he took our sorrows, as he took our rejection, as he took our bitterness, everything, our sin upon himself, he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And this is the hope you and I have that because Jesus faced the turning away of the Father, you and I will never experience the silence of the Father. We will never be forsaken. Not only did Jesus pay for our sins and he paid for our sorrows, but he rose victorious over death itself, giving us hope that death will not have the final say on our lives. And today he is exalted, seated next to his father, interceding for us as a high priest who knows our weaknesses. He cries out to the Father on our behalf every time we are unable to deal with our pain and our sorrow. Does it bring you comfort to remember that you have Jesus, the High Priest, praying on your behalf to the Father? And ultimately, we know that Jesus is coming back again. That a time is going to come where every injustice will be made right. Every pain will be dealt with. Every sorrow will be taken away. And we will have no more tears. That is the journey we are moving towards. That is the story that we look to as we sit with our pain and grief today. That is the inheritance that we have. So we grieve today not as those without hope but we grieve as those who have an eternal home waiting for us where there will be no pain, there will be no sorrow. But while, while we wait between the poles of what is yet to come and the pain of today, God invites us to move near Him with lament in our waiting, pouring out our hearts. 
And as we do that, we experience the closeness of our Savior who moves towards the brokenhearted, who moves towards the contrite in spirit, that we may find the comfort from the God of all mercies. And finally, I end with this point, that what is the outworking of our lament? It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. You see, there is an outworking of the comfort that we receive from God. It is not only meant to be for us, but we become people who have received this comfort and now we move towards others, those who are in sorrow, those who are in pain with the same comfort that we have received from our Heavenly Father. You see, there's a world around us in the brokenness and the pain and the sorrow looking for answers. We can become those hands and feet those, those voices that bring comfort into their heart by pointing them to the Father of all mercies and the God of all comfort. And because we ourselves know what it means to be in pain and in sorrow, we move towards them with compassion, not with judgment. We move towards them as those who understand, just like our Savior who is acquainted with grief. And we become people who weep with those who weep, who mourn with those who mourn. And we become those who bear each other's burdens. And that is the ministry that we are called to do. Our pain need not have the final word. In fact, God can redeem it and He can use that very thing by which He can bring His glory and make it a means of comfort to others. So as we end this morning, I want to leave us with these three questions. What is the pain and the sorrow that your heart is feeling this season? Would you be willing to take that to the Lord? And secondly, will you be honest with your complaints, with your struggles, and come to a place where you can experience His comfort? And finally, as we are in a place where we need that comfort, I want to invite some of us that the pain and the sorrow that we go through, it requires someone to walk alongside us, someone who's a trained counselor who can, who can help us deal with some of those traumatic experiences. And if that's where you are, I want to invite you to reach out to us because we want to walk with you through this journey so that you may experience the healing and the comfort that comes from our God. So Father, we thank you this morning for the gift of lament. We thank you that the one whom we pray to is the one who is the man of all sorrows, the man who is acquainted with every grief the one who is not silent to the cries of our heart, but the one who gives this call, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Help us, O oh God, to move towards you, to bring our sorrows towards you, that we may experience the comfort that comes from you. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. As we have heard this word, you want to see it in the light of what's happening uh, in our lives. You want to introspect our hearts. What is really happening in our hearts as the grief and the despair that is happening around the world, how has it affected me? Or if it has happened to my family or somebody very close to us, how is it affecting? We want to take this opportunity to introspect ourselves. And when we introspect, we are not in a path of despair. We are not path of being orphaned, left alone. Because God is with us. 
Now I'm reminded of the same verse that we heard a few minutes back of Matthew 11:28 to 30 where Jesus says, "Come to me all who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest." If you are carrying any kind of burden that is wearing you down, you want to come before Jesus because he says, "I will give you rest." And he goes on to say that take my yoke upon you and learn from me for i am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls we not only take off our weariness take off our burden out but jesus wants us to take his yoke upon us and therefore he says his yoke is easy and my burden is light verse 30 matthew 11 god has taken upon our yoke our yoke which is very some for us our yoke which is burdensome for us which we cannot carry has been taken upon Jesus himself and Jesus wants to trade our yoke with his because his yoke is light his burden is so easy for us to carry because 2000 years back he took upon the burden upon himself he took upon the cross upon himself he took upon the gory some death upon himself he was not supposed to die we were supposed to be crucified we were supposed to go through the torturous death for our sins but jesus took upon all of that upon himself so that we could be a life that is in him dear brothers and sisters even as we introspect our hearts i want to ask you to lay aside all the weariness all the burdensome thoughts and allow jesus to take that place take the yoke of jesus in that place allow me to administer the lord's communion as jesus was having dinner with the disciples he took the bread that was in front of them he broke it and he said this is my body that is being broken for you and likewise he took the wine that was in front of them and he said this is the blood of the new covenant this blood is going to be shed for the forgiveness of sins and even as we heard from what ruby had to share that this body was broken and this blood was shed for our sakes so that there will be a trade of our burdens with his and therefore we can lead a life that truly be light our spirits can be lightened our lives will not be without grief but our life will be with lot of hope and comfort because we have Jesus residing inside of us allow me to just pray for us father want to thank you lord for your presence in our lives thank you lord for speaking to us through your word and enabling us lord to look unto jesus who is the true lord a reliever of all of our griefs lord who is the one who puts us in a path of comfort and hope and to stay away from the grief and the despair that is happening around us father i pray that lord even as we look unto you that lord your presence will engulf our rooms engulf our hearts lord this morning that we want to experience jesus in our hearts we want to experience jesus in our lives lord that lord the things that are happening around us lord we pray for your healing to rest upon them that lord people will see the true glory of god lord through these times of grief lord father I want to bless you, Lord Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, if you are with your family and friends, feel free to pass on the bread and the wine and spend some time in prayer.
joining in do share your feedback about the service on the form that would be broadcast now you could also locate the same in the youtube description and the chat box come let us pray thank you lord for your presence thank you for speaking to us uh, we pray that you bless each one of us uh, who has joined in for uh, today's service we also pray for your blessings upon all the people who could make this service possible in jesus most precious name i pray amen uh the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you uh the lord turn his face toward you and give you peace amen uh do remember to join uh the virtual lobby at 11:45 uh the online service is over uh have a lovely day and a blessed week ahead